Our Father, our hearts are open, our ears open. We're ready to receive your word. I pray, Father, that these who hear me as your mouthpiece will look past me, beyond me, and not miss their blessing because of the packaging, that they will accept, embrace what you say through these lips of clay. I thank you that I'm hidden with Christ in you. Thank you that the treasure in earth and vessel will be made manifest today, that these will hear, they will receive your word, they will do your word. And I thank you, Father, that there may be, there will be much fruit, fruit that abounds and remains for your glory and honor as we're doers of your word in Jesus' name. Amen. You got Isaiah 54? I want to look at two verses, verse 2 and 3. Enlarge the place of your tent and let them stretch out the curtains of your dwellings. Do not spare. Lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes, for you shall expand to the right and to the left, and your descendants will inherit the nations and make the desolate cities inhabited. Can we collectively say amen? Amen. amen. Man, I, I think, I think you all have already grasped something uh, of the word. I feel like I almost I could just say now unto him that washed us in his blood benediction and we go home because I think you got at least a part of the message. Uh, there are a number of verses that I could have selected, but I wanted to select this one, and I believe that this is uh, prophetic for each and every one of us, for us corporately and for us individually. I, I want you to just kind of look at the passage again, and you'll see word or take notice of words like enlarge and stretch out and uh, lengthen uh, and strengthen your stakes for what God wants to do. Um, it, there, there's a stretching, there's a stretching, there's a stretching going on, there's a stretching going on, there's a, there's a stretching, a stretching out going on, there's a stretching going on, there's a, there's a stretching going on. <laughs> There's, there's a stretching, there's a stretching in the house, there's a stretching in you, there's a stretching in your house, there's a stretching, there's a stretching. I want you to know what's going on, there's a stretching, there's a stretching, there's a stretch. Come on somebody, come on out there, there's a stretching, there's a stretching, there's a stretching. Uh, um, so I want you to know that you're being stretched, not stressed. I know it looks like you're being stressed, but look at your neighbor and say, stretch, not stress. Come on, tell somebody else, I'm being stretched, but I'm not stressed. Go ahead and take your seats, please. Mm. Mm. Just now, I tell you, just now, releasing that word, the Lord, just this moment, took me back to the school one New Year's Eve. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. And I believe he wants me to tell you what I told the congregation on that evening. From the, from the word of the Lord, uh, thank you, Lord. He's, it's not in my notes, but I just believe the Lord wants me to release this word. And that is to tell you, in addition to you being stretched, not stress, you have circled this mountain long enough. I know you just sat down, but would you just get up again and find three people and tell them you have circled this mountain long enough.
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Mm. Mm. If, 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 if perhaps this is your first time here and, and maybe, maybe you're not familiar with this, this, this dynamic, this, this kind of expression, um, uh, you're in a safe place. Don't worry about it. Don't, don't worry about it. You're in a safe place. Safe place for you. Dangerous for the devil, but it's a safe, a safe place for you. But um, uh, even when the Israelites heard the word of the Lord, it's noted in Scripture that they rejoiced and said, Amen. And when you hear a word from the Lord, it resonates on the inside of you. It's appropriate for you to break forth as you did in a high praise. It's in the house. 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 And uh, I don't believe we're done just yet. It's in the house. And uh, uh, how many of you are relieved to hear such a word? How many of you are refreshed to hear such a word? I see a lot of hands. I see a lot of hands. I see a lot of hands. I, I just need you to connect with somebody near you, just somebody near you. Just touch them. Just touch them and say, oh, magnify the Lord with me. Now shake them. Say, let us exalt his name together for this word here today. Come on. Take it up a bit. Take it up a bit. Come on, raise the roof. Let them hear it across town. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory. Glory, glory, glory. Glory, 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 glory. I got to praise and I just got to get it out. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Mm. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm so happy. I know just what to do. <laughs> I know that's not how the saying goes. Somebody said, I'm so happy, I don't know what to do. Oh, I know, I'm so happy, I know what to do. I know what to say. Thank you, Jesus. I lift my hands in praise to you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Mm. So, um, respectfully, I, we have a congregation that's comprised of non-church, some churched, former Catholics, former Lutherans, Presbyterians, Methodists, United Methodists, AME, CME, Christmas, Mother's Day, and Easter, Pentecostal Assemblies of the World, Apostolic United, Holy Church, Fire Baptized, Church of God in Christ. I was, I was raised in, in Church of God in Christ, and I'm grateful for my roots. I'm, I'm grateful for the foundation. But I tell you, we had a whole lot, but there was a lot we were missing, and I say that respectfully. Now, for example, we didn't know the Hebrew words for praise. At least I never heard anybody teach it. We didn't know the 
Greek words for praise. But I tell you what, we did them all. We lifted our hands, we bowed, we laughed, we shaked, shook, rattled and rolled. Mm -hmm. We laid prostrate, prostrate before the Lord and danced. Oh, we danced. You could not beat a Pentecostal dancing. I don't care what the ethnicity. I got around some of my other brothers and, and sisters, uh, particularly in word of, word of Faith camps, and uh, er everybody was trying to get real conservative, this, that, and the other. And then the individual that they called the father of the modern day faith movement, Kenneth Copeland, in Oklahoma, while they're a student at Oral Roberts University, I said, let me go on over here to camp meeting. And I'm telling you, them folk went in. And it wasn't just folk with tents, tinted skin. It was folk of every nationality. The ones who didn't have the rhythm and the style and... That's how they did. But let me tell you, everything that had breath in that, in that convention center was jumping. So we just gonna be Kojic here for the next two minutes, all right? If you don't know how to do Kojic, then you do Baptist. There's some ushers somewhere with smelling sauce. But I want us put our hands together. If you're gonna clap, clap. If you're gonna, if you're gonna leap, if you're gonna. One, two, three, come on. Go for it. You got two minutes. Make the sound.
Hallelujah. Yes. Remember, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Somebody just received a tremendous impartation of great strength. <laughs> Someone may be asking the question, okay, you gave me two minutes. Why did you, why did you just, just kept on dancing? Why did you just kept on jumping and shouting? You know that song was longer than that in the club. Folk don't be looking at the clock in the club. Doing the stinky leg, whatever you call it. Yeah. What a wonderful savior. Uh, I gotta try to teach you, so um, please, you, you, you try, try to help me out. This is, this, is, this is where we have to try to thank you. This is where we have to try to uh, move on and transition smoothly. And so just, Try to take your seat if you can and thank you. Mm. Okay. Don't don't get nervous. I, I really have a, 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 a short word at least. Uh, I think it's a short word. It's not the quantity of words that's important. It's the quality of words. Today's message may be considered an addendum to last week's pressure points. How many of you were here last week and heard me speak on pressure points? That's just a few of you, okay. So the rest of you, um, you weren't here last week, or you just went to sleep on me. Um, let me see your hands if you were here last week and you heard the message. Okay, quite a few of you. So for those of you who couldn't raise your hand, go back YouTube, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel uh, if you haven't done so already, and you can hear that message. And um, I know it'll be a blessing to you. And so this is supplemental to that message. In addition to this morning's text, which I just read, I want you to please recall uh, the verse I cited last week using the Message Bible translation, that is James chapter 1, verses 2 and 3, which says, Consider it a sheer gift, friends, when tests and challenges come at you from all sides. You know that under pressure, your faith life is forced into the open and shows its true colors. So don't try to get out of anything prematurely. Let it do its work so that you become mature and well-developed, not deficient in any way. Testing and pressures may indeed be seen as stretching. So the testing and the pressure that you've been experiencing is in fact stretching. As with pressure, Remember, last week we said pressure is normal, necessary, and it's a blessing. True also is stretching. It's normal, it's necessary, and ultimately you'll find it to be a blessing. Uh, everybody say stretched and stressed. I started to title the message, Yes, I'm Stretched, or Yes, or Stretched, Yes, uh, stressed, no. I think we're getting confused and we're, we're saying things that we ought not to say, but it's out of the heart the mouth speaks. And too many of us are speaking stress because we're misunderstanding what's going on. And so we interpret as to what's happening in our life as stretching, as stressing rather when it's actually stretching. Okay, the word stretch means to draw out or extend like oneself 
um, one's body, like when you stretch in the morning, uh, limbs, uh, a bird stretches its wings to the full length or extent, stretching. Uh, to be stretched is a term that we use often, which really speaks about difficulty, challenges, uh, doing everything that's on our plate to do, everything that we want to do, everything that we should do, because we lack the necessary time. Seems like there's not enough time in a day to do everything that we must do, or there's not enough money, so we're stretched. We got more month than money. Anybody been there before? Um, uh, sometimes it's a lack of human resources. We don't have enough people. And then sometimes it's simply equipment. I don't have the right tools. Stretching is a part of life. I don't want folk being upset with me, so I need you to help me. Let's, let's, uh, uh, let, let, let's let this um, <laughs> go from me to you for a moment here. And I want you to tell your neighbor, say, God is out to stretch you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, you're in good company, though, hear me. When God is out to stretch you, that's a good thing. It might hurt, but it won't harm you. It's for your good. You all remember the dreamer, Joseph? I mean, Joseph had it going on. He was a favorite son of his dad. Yeah, Joseph. Joseph, he was the man. He's a dreamer. He's got great dreams. He shares his dreams with his brothers. And his brothers, who didn't like him really in the first place, hated him. So much so, they came up with a scheme. The intent first was to kill him. Let's just wipe out the dreamer. Let's just kill him. He's getting on our nerves. I know he's our blood brother, but we don't want anything to do with him. Thank God that when God's given you a dream dreamer, when God's given you a vision visionary, that you can't die until the dream and the vision comes to pass. No weapon formed against you will prosper. Even your enemies will have to watch you as God wines and dines you at his table. He prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. So Joseph was stretched. He found himself in some difficult situations. I encourage you, it's several chapters long, but read it in Genesis. It'll bless you. Joseph life. When it was all said and done, he saw that the stretching was God's doing. In fact, when, uh, when you get to the story, and it's a remarkable story, um, years go by, and he says to his brothers when he encounters them again, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. God allowed it to happen so that he could send me ahead of you for your own salvation to keep you alive in times of famine. Job was stretched. He is another man, had it going on. I mean, the righteous man was blessed, but then he started experiencing losses. Losses. He, was, he lost children. He lost uh, his um, um, animals, herds, um, uh, property, his health. Lost all of these things. Lost everything except his wife. And this sister got the nerve to come. Why don't you just curse God and die? Mila, I, you know, I just think, this is just me, not Job, because he was so righteous. I got, guess I got a little work. I'm like, uh, Lord, we forgot one. Think lightning can strike her about right now, Lord? So he, he didn't say that, but he said, you sound like a fool. You talk like a foolish woman. Sometimes you just got to call it what it is. But when it was all said and done, God restored to Job, though he was stretched in the end, the Bible says, in essence, he got double for his trouble. And the release of this came when he prayed for his friends. When you pray for other folk in the midst of what you're going through, even some of those shady folk, I'm helping somebody. How many of you, honestly, you know what it is to be stretched? Either past or present. <laughs> well, I tell you, if you can't raise your hand for past or present, I need my first responders to go to that person right now and check for heartbeat and pulse or what have you, because you must not be here. Um, and if so, then you just keep living, because there's some stretching in your future. 
And for all of us who have been stretched, there's more stretching on the way. Maybe in the very midst of your stretching right now. But it's good news. Don't, 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 don't get me wrong. You're thinking pain. You're thinking stress. There you go. But it's stretching that ultimately will be for your good. Now, the word stress, uh, as we find it in the dictionary, is defined as physical, mental, or emotional strain or tension. Stress is the physical or mental response to an external cause, such as having a lot of homework, students, or a little money, both of which are stressed. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I thought about this, and um, let me put it this way. Uh, years ago, this was very popular. I don't hear it as much now. Um, but I do hear it every now and again, particularly from uh, 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 faith people, and we should be people of faith. How you doing, brother? I'm too blessed to be stressed. Go ahead and tell somebody, I'm too blessed to be stressed. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. And, and that's true. That, that, that's true. We're too blessed to be stressed. Yes, and amen. But even the strongest of believers will face stress on a daily basis. Some of you stressed right now. You're, you're, you're dealing with stress right now. But hear me, notwithstanding, God wants us to triumph over stress through Christ Jesus. God doesn't want you to be stressed out. He doesn't want you to be stressed out in life. He doesn't want you to be stressed out because your money's funny, because your health is whack. He doesn't want you to be stressed out with your spouse. He doesn't want you to be stressed out with your children. And God knows if anybody can stress you out, it's the ones you brought into the world. Now we got to be so politically correct. But back in the day, man, those parents, they had a different perspective and a different practice. Mm hmm Come on, we probably, those of my generation and before me, you know, you know the saying, I brought you into this world. I will take you out. I will knock you to. I will kill you and tell God you died. Stress comes in, in many forms. There, there are several types of stress. There's the psychological and uh, what's called psychological and anxiety disorders. Things like OCD, PTSD, OCD being a obsessive compulsive disorder, um, PTSD, post-traumatic stress disor disorder, not just of those who may have served in the military, but if you've encountered trauma in life, you may be dealing with those kinds of issues. Social disorder, phobias, like uh, you're afraid of spiders. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. You're afraid of things that creep when the Lord created you to have dominion over creeping things. You got the nerve to jump on a dresser <laughs> with your big self. Your adult self, that's probably a better way to say it. Your, your adult self for a little, a little itsy bitsy spider. <laughs> thank you, Lord. I, I, I thank you for bringing that to mind. They didn't get it, but take you back to your childhood. Then there's these real concerns. They're called real concerns. Typically things that you have no control over. Mm -hmm. uh, the loss of a loved one, uh, global unrest, uh, even though you voted who's in the White House, who's thinking about trying to get back in the White House. God bless you, all, all my friends. I don't care what your political, that's not my, my listen, we're in a democratic society, there's, there's, Democrat, Democratic Party, Republican Party, there's the Independent Party or whatever. All, all of them got shade. All of them got issues. 
none's righteous, saith the Lord. Um, and, and God knows we need divine intervention, his presence in every, every, every party. I don't care who's in the White House. I pray for the president. I pray for those who are in authority as I'm instructed to pray. But I'm really challenged with some of you, my dear friends, you're sending me this stuff that I have to fact check. And when I fact check, I see how is it that you embrace lies time and time again? That creates some stress. I pray in truth be exposed, truth be revealed. I'm praying 2 Chronicles 7 and 14. God knows we need a healing in our land. And I believe in God who can pluck up one and replace them with another, whoever's in the White House. Because ain't nobody squeaky clean but the Lord Jesus. Amen. So that's just a little, it's not in my outline, it's not in my notes, but I just felt impressed to say that. Um, so keep your faith in God. Do pray for those who are in the You may not have voted for the president, uh, the, the current president, or the previous president, um, or the one who's coming. Okay? But always take the high road and embrace what is right and not allow these other things to put you into great stress. There's what's called exaggerated worry. That's the what ifs <laughs> and the if onlys. Mm -hmm. Worrying about tomorrow, worrying about yesterday, worrying about today, worrying about tomorrow. What am I going to eat? What am I going to wear? Where am I going to work? Who am I going to marry? <laughs> worrying about yesterday. Oh, man, if I had only said this during the interview. Mm -hmm. God doesn't want you to be stressed out. God allows some things to come not to stress you, but to stretch you. Oh, everybody just jump up real quick, just jump up. Just. See? Y'all on my time, it took you that long? Thank you, Lord, that's why the Lord, I, Lord put it in my mind to have you just stretch right now, just stretch, come on, stretch. Just stretch, just stretch. Stretch. Come on, extend your arms, hands. Yeah, just stretch. Don't that feel good? Yeah. That feel good. Now go ahead and take a seat. That's what God is up to. He's stretching you. Yeah, that stretch felt good. Sometimes the stretch might be a little uncomfortable, but it's good for you better than cod liver oil. I want to give you in my conclusion, I told you it wasn't going to be long, see, so y'all didn't believe me. In my conclusion, I want to give you some of the reasons why you're being stretched. I want to give you the purpose of stressing. It's not an exhaustive list. You may be able to add something to the list. But I knew I got a wedding to perform and we could not be here for hours. So, let me submit this to you. This is not in order of importance. They're all important. But the first reason I want to give you as to why you're being stretched is that stretching is for preparation. God is preparing you for what God has prepared for you. 1 Corinthians 9 and 25, the Apostle Paul says, And everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Now, they do it to obtain a perishable crown, but we for an imperishable crown. Just as an athlete is prepared for his or her competition, for the race or for whatever it is that they're doing, gain, they have to go through rigorous training mm -hmm, and testing. God is preparing you by stretching you. He is training you for reigning. Your training is for reigning. You just need to put that in the comment if you haven't done so. Come on, say, I'm training for reigning. Come on, say that of yourself. Talk to yourself. I'm training for reigning. In fact, it's about transformation. 
It's about transformation. That's why, and listen, I think it's important that we have discernment in this hour and not be so quick to judge one another. When you see somebody, they're being stressed and you think they're being punished. You think the trouble that's really stretching is because they've missed dotting some I's and crossing some T's. What you need to do is shut your mouth except to pray for them because they're actually being stretched. When you, when you may look at me and it, may, it may, may look like I'm kind of going through, I'm challenged with this, that, and the other, just know I'm going through a change. I'm going through a change. I'm going through a change. Tell somebody, because I know it's you too. Tell them I'm going through a change. I'm, I'm going through a change. Don't mind me. Don't mind me. I'm going to be all right. I'm going through a change. I'm going through a change. I'm going. Oh, and it's a wonderful change. I know you can't see it right now because uh, I'm in the process, but I'm going through a change. I'm being stretched. And oh, sometimes it make you want to holler. Make you want to holler. Make you out, but I'm going through a change. You're going through a change. And when it's all said and done, you're going to be prepared. In fact, Paul said again in 2 Corinthians 3 and 18, but we all, all of us, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as the, uh, the Spirit uh, of the Lord, or, or just as by the Spirit of the Lord. In other words, um, even in going from glory to glory, from faith to faith, from strength to strength, there is stretching involved. You, you, you want the glory, but you don't want the stretching. You want the anointing, but you don't want the stretching. Mm -hmm. Number two, stretching is to move us out of our comfort zone. Yeah, that's why God is stretching you to move you out of your comfort zone. Oh, my God, my time is quickly moving. Uh, Matthew chapter 7, just note it. Math, uh, Matthew, excuse me, Matthew chapter 14, verses 28 through 33. Here's the occasion of, of Jesus walking on the water, and the disciples are looking out in the midst of the storm, and they see Jesus walking. Somebody say, it's a ghost. Oh, my God, what's going on? And Peter, in the midst of everybody else in the boat, says, Lord, if that's you, uh, tell me to come out to you. And Jesus said, come, come, come. Jesus told Peter to get out the boat, to get out of his comfort zone. That was a moment of stretching for Peter. And the Bible says Peter got out of the boat. I can imagine the others who were in the boat with Peter said, bro, what you doing? You about to kill yourself. Just because Jesus is walking on the water don't mean you walking on the water. Then you got those, mm, who does he think he is? He's so grand. He's so, he, he, he thinks he's so close to God. He can just say, bid me to come to you. You got that to deal with are the folk who stay in the boat, who remain in their comfort zone. But for you, my brother and sister, you're of a different breed. God is calling you out of your comfort zone for something greater than you can imagine. And that's why you're going through the, stressing, the, the, the stretching right now. And so the Bible lets us know as long as Peter's eyes were on Jesus, he walked on the water. But then he began to consider his surroundings. Uh, see, when you're, when you're getting out of your boat, getting out of your comfort zone, uh, it's like you got to be oblivious to what's going on around you. Oh, you may hear the waves. Uh, you might, see, uh, you might uh, hear the wind. You might see what's going on, but make certain that you don't break focus. You keep your eyes on Jesus because whenever you start considering the elements, then you'll open the door for fear and anxiety, and you'll get stressed about what's going on in the world, and then you'll begin to sink. Peter missed it here, but he cried out, Save me, Jesus! And as soon as he cried out, God delivered him, and God will deliver you as well. He's stretching you to get you out of your comfort zone. Some of you have been removed from your previous cliques. I mean, friendships, circles, that's cliques. God is putting you into a new place with new surroundings. Because frankly, if you've been the smartest person in your circle, you have, you have no one to help you become smarter. If you're the strongest one in your circle, then they're just pulling on you. You have no one to help make you stronger. Make certain that you have some people who are smarter than you in your circle. Mm -hmm. who, who are even um, uh, uh, more spiritual. 
got to qualify spiritual today because everybody's spiritual, and I mean in a biblical context. Iron sharpens iron. Let me, let me conclude. Uh, God's moving you out of your comfort zone. The next thing, number three, stretching is for character development. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. God is uh, working on your character. Mm -hmm. I want you to look at Romans 5. Let's look at verse 3. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, pressure, mm -hmm. testing, stretching, knowing that the tribulation, testing, trials, stretching produces perseverance, endurance. Here's a, here's a word. Uh, I think it's in the dictionary now. stick to itiveness. If it's not, it's going to be there. And you let Webster know that I came up with that word <laughs> since nobody else is claiming it. And perseverance, stick to itiveness, character, and character, hope. Not wishful thinking, but confident expectation. The fact of the matter is, you may be a person of excellent spirit. You've got a great character, but there's always room for improvement. Character is the ability to consistently make right choices irrespective of feelings, circumstances, or cost. Yeah. Character is the real deal, is who you are when nobody's looking. Character says when the cashier gives you $20 more than he or she should have given you, you don't start quickening when you get to the car after you've carried that $20 out and say, mm, won't he do it? You take your hips back into that store and you said, excuse me, you gave me too much. And then that's character. Character will, will have you flirt only with your spouse. You save your flirtation for your spouse. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh. It's quiet in this section right here. It's quiet, quiet. Y'all need to make some noise. I'm going to have me wondering in a moment. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your character will, will not have you dressing for another man at the job. Bro man, character will have you walk righteously before the other ladies on the job, not trying to draw attention to yourself. Oh, I got to take a document to so-and-so. <laughs> Boss told me to give you this. Uh -oh, uh -oh, uh -oh, uh -oh. So God is stretching you, allowing some things for your character development because it's necessary for what he's preparing you for. Because if you don't have character, what you get, you won't be able to keep. I'm teaching better than y'all saying. Let me move on. Number four, stretching is to increase and deepen our faith. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God stretches you to increase and deepen your faith. He allows you to go through uh, the, the, the furnace of affliction. He allows your faith to be tested, to be tried. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, God. Um, Hebrews 11 and 6 lets us know that it's impossible to please God without faith. You say you want to please God. He says, okay, we got to work on your faith. You got to believe God. And so God will allow you into some areas of life that you would rather not go, intending to stretch you so that you can come to this realization that your absolute dependence is upon, must be upon the Lord. He will let your back get to the wall. Uh -huh. But there's only but so far you can back up to the wall because always goodness and mercy shall follow you. So when you back up, there's the goodness, there's the mercy. And then furthermore, his favor surrounds us as a shield. 
but God will allow you to get into some desperate situations so that your eyes can be open, so that your faith can grow, because without a test, there's no money. Let me help you out. Without a test, there's no testimony. Man, you, you love to hear people talk about how God delivered them from out of harm's way, how God healed their body. Oh, my God. I remember a dear, a dear, a dear woman, a godly woman who's with the Lord, both she, she and her husband now. But her husband, for many years, uh, he was not a saved man. In fact, he, he was nowhere, nowhere near salvation, as we would call it. He, he, but she prayed, and finally the man got saved. And dear mother got up one day and shared her testimony. And she said, I prayed, I prayed for my husband 25 years. I prayed 15 for the drinking alone. I prayed that God would save that man. People used to say, I don't know why you stay with that devil. I said, he's my devil. I'm staying with this man. Mother, mother said this at church. It's public. She said it. She prayed for that man, and he got saved, and he, he and her are in the presence of the Lord right now. She had to go through 25 years, though. I know this is a different generation. You ain't waiting 25 minutes. You got 25 minutes to get it together. I'm moving on. My, my clock is ticking. I don't know what happened, where the shift was in the generation. What happened to people who would be merciful with one another, forgive one another? Number five, because I got to go to the wedding. Stretching occurs to increase our capacity. <laughs> Stretching is to expand you and to extend you. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Matthew 12 and 13, to the man with the withered hand, the Lord said, stretch out your hand. And he stretched it out, and it was restored as whole as the other. Your hand represents your life, your power, your capacity, your ability. Yeah, your hands, your creativity. And some of you, while you have good use of your physical hand, your, your, your spiritual hand has been withered. Uh, you've been locked up. You, 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 you've not been able to extend yourself. And God says, I'm moving the barriers. I'm bringing healing. I'm bringing deliverance. I'm bringing wholeness. Stretch out your hand in Jesus' name. I just want you to do that as, a, a, as an expression. In, in fact, stretch it out to God. In the name of Jesus, stretch out your hand. And God bring a mighty release to you and increase your capacity. Which brings us back to the text. Enlarge the place of your tent. Let them stretch out the curtains of your dwellings. Oh my God, he's expanding you. He's extending you. Do not spare. Do not limit God by unbelief. Don't do just a little bit. Uh, put, put all of you into it. Partner with God. Lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes because what he's getting ready to do for you is going to blow your mind and everybody that's looking at you. For you shall expand to the right and to the left. Everywhere we look, we're going to see expansion and your descendants will inherit the nation. In other words, I'm not just going to bless you. Ain't finished blessing you. Uh, uh, except that your family is blessed, those who are coming after you. Yeah, 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 your, your, your children, your grandchildren, uh, and, and your great-great-grandchildren. God says, I'm doing something and make the desolate cities inhabited. I'm going to restore some things to you. Where there's been desolation, I'm going to bring you to, as we said uh, a few weeks ago, a, a, to make you a delightful land, that everywhere you look, you're going to see delight. And remember, in a delightful land, land are delightful people. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. What is this? Camera, cameraman, where's my, where's my close-up camera? Where's my close-up camera? Okay, you see this? What is it? A brother band. It's a rubber band. Okay? I thought of how I was going to do this. And so this is how I'm going to do it, because I don't want nobody suing me. Okay, a rubber band. You put it around uh, papers, letters, 
Um, that's typically what you do it for, or uh, come on, ladies. You know you used to do it. Mm -hmm. But for all of the brothers in the house, maybe some sisters, but you can't give testosterone a rubber band without us seeing it as an opportunity to get somebody. I ain't, I ain't did this in so long. Like use it as a gun. And so the only way it's going to travel is that you stretch it. And so I'm stretching, the, I'm stretching the rubber band so that it can go from here to there. Y'all ready? I need a close up. I need a close up. It's not just the people in the house that need to see this. I need my camera people. There you go. Okay. All right. So y'all got to follow it. I'm just giving you a little heads up. Okay. So I'm stretching it, right? All right. I'm going to let it go. With a little stretching, I was able to move the rubber band from here to there. But where God is taking you is not just from here to there, not a little distance. He's taking you further to a further distance. He's taking you a great distance. Come on, tell somebody he's taking you a great distance, a great, great distance. So in order for it to go a great distance, and I got to do this because I don't, I, I don't want to hit, hit Kareem. I don't want to hit Kareem. So in order to go a greater distance, what do I got to do? I got to stretch it more. I think I can hit it. In fact, Jermaine, if you just put your face in that middle frame there, I know I'll hit it. The little stretching that I did with the first rubber band wouldn't have been able to hit it. But when I put the greater pressure on it, when I gave it a greater stretch, stretching, then there was a greater distance. Hear me as I conclude that God is out to stretch you. I said it before, I say it again. And the greater the stretching, the greater the distance. The greater the stretching, the greater the blessing. The greater the stretching, the greater the anointing. The greater the stretching, the greater the glory. So, my brothers and sisters, understand what's going on. He's not hurting you. He's helping you because when he stretches you, he's propelling you into destiny. You got to be stretched. It's got to happen. Oh, and when it happens. Let's go. Let's go. Everybody stand. There shall be glory after this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I hope I helped somebody. I help somebody. I help somebody. I help somebody. I help somebody. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. There's a there's a, a young lady. Yeah, you I'm right there. Mm -hmm. No, don't look. Yeah, you, you, yeah. Mm, no, you. I don't mean the point. Yeah. Would you come here? Yeah, mm -hmm. I hate to put you on the spot. Yep, yeah, it's you, it's you. I would have told you if you ain't the one. You ain't the one. You the one. They gave me two rubber bands, and I didn't know why, because I only asked for two, but God knows all things. So I'm giving you this rubber band, and I want you to wear it for a few days, all right? Wear it for a few days. I mean, you can take it off to, you know, at night. You don't have to sleep. But I want you to wear it for a day. And every time you see it, just give God a praise. I'm being stretched. I'm stressed, but I'm not stressing, okay? All right? Wear it for at least three days, okay? Okay. And uh, uh, brother, right here, brother, right here, I want, I want you to do the same, okay? Just wear it for a few days. And, and, uh, and if anybody asks you why you got the rubber band, just say it's to remind me I'm, I'm stretching and not stressing, okay? And furthermore, there's been some matters of the heart 
that you've had before the Lord. Um, you're an intelligent man. You know a lot about a lot of things, but there's some things in life that you just cannot figure out, and you've had those before the Lord, matters of the heart. And God says, I've heard you, and the revelation of what you're seeking is yours, and it's going to come to pass. It's, it's, it's kind of like it's easing up on you. So don't give up. The answer is clear, it's near, it's coming to you. Just live in expectancy at the point of time, at the very moment you need it, it's gonna be there, and it's gonna be your Eureka experience, okay? So you keep believing God, it's coming to pass for you. <laughs> hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Some trust in horses, some trust in chariots, but this is your determination. This is your resolve. I will trust in the name of the Lord. And when you trust God as you have trusted him, then remember he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Your trust, your faith in him has not been a Sunday only thing. You trust him when, when you're nowhere around the house, uh, this house. Um, God says that your faith has opened up doors for you and have paved the way that the blessings, even some of those things that have, have uh, seemed to have been withheld, and even some of those things I hear the Lord say that you've been cheated out of, uh, that was a temporary situation. God's going to bring those things into pass, uh, to pass rather, and into your life, and he's going to flood your life with such goodness that you're going to be like, wow, yeah, that stressing and that purpose, per pressure was worth it. God's purpose comes to fulfillment in your life. Just keep your eyes on Jesus and keep doing what you've been doing. Good things for you in Jesus' name. I believe God. How about you? Um, Everybody, right here, just for a moment, bow your heads and, and, and close your eyes for a moment. Every, every, every person, please, no movement, no talking, just bow your heads and, and close your eyes. If you're here today, before we dismiss ourselves from this place, I want to give you an opportunity. If you don't know Jesus, I want to pray with you so that you can come to know him. Again, with every head bowed and every eye closed. Whenever you hear me do that and say it again, it's because somebody's looking at me. Every head bowed, every eyes closed, just in reverence before the Lord, please. So, if you're the one that I need to pray for this morning, I want you to slip up your hands long enough for me to acknowledge you because my eyes are open, and then you can put your hands down. I see a hand, two hands, three hands, four hands. I see a fifth hand, six, seven, eight, nine. I see your hand, I see your hand, I see your hand. There's a tenth hand here. Some of you may have gotten off track. You need to come back, rededicate your life to the Lord. I want you to be included in this prayer. Let's all lift our hands before the Lord, and I want to lead you in this brief prayer. Mean it from your heart. You're simply talking to God. Say, dear God, I repent of my sins and of everything that has grieved your spirit. I come in Jesus' name the risen Savior, Jesus, who is Lord. I confess, Jesus, you are Lord. Lord Jesus, save me, deliver me, fill me with your spirit. I vow this day to live for you for the rest of my life. Have your way in me. Do what you please for your praise. Stretch me in every direction i'm yours all that i am all that i have thank you father for saving me and claiming me as your own in jesus name i pray amen come on let's praise the name of the lord let's praise the name of the lord thank you for watching i trust that you were blessed by the message and if indeed you were, would you do me a favor? Do all of us a favor. And I say thank you in advance. Take a moment right now and subscribe to our channel and share. And if in fact the message has blessed you, would you partner with us by sowing a kind and generous seed? Your partnership with us helps us to do what we do and spreading this gospel, good news of the kingdom to people everywhere. Thank you in advance and join us again next time.